السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن اهتدى بهداه وبعد we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We thank him upon all conditions. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his entire household, all his companions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them all and bless every single one of us. Ameen. My beloved brothers and sisters, every masjid, every place of worship or the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would generally be referred to using a respectable, respectful, beautiful name. So when you are going to pray, for example, you would say that I'm going to pray at Masjid and then you would refer to it as something so that people know where you are going. If there are four or five Masajid in the locality, you would know I'm going to Masjid Taqwa, for example. I'm going to Masjid Bilal, for example. In this case, I am going to Masjid Ibadur Rahman. Am I right? This name has inspired me today to say something. It is a beautiful name because it has a beautiful meaning and Allah describes the qualities of those who refer to themselves as Ibadur Rahman or whom Allah refers to as Ibadur Rahman in the Quran. So, ibadun would be the plural of worshipper, the worshippers or the slaves, the slaves of whom? It's easy to say ibadullahi. That, that term has also been used, but when we say ibadur rahmani, we are referring to the slaves of the most merciful because the idea is to attain and achieve the mercy of Allah. When I say I'm a slave of, and then I use one of the names of Allah, I am basically seeking that particular quality. I'm looking for goodness in a specific direction. So I want the mercy of Allah. So I call myself the slave of the most merciful, whereas it was easy for me to say I'm the slave of Allah. Because on the day of judgment, Abdul Rahmani is a beautiful name. So Ibadur Rahmani are many Abdul Rahmans. Subhanallah. We hear that? So let's go into the Quran in Surah Al Furqan, verse number 63. Remember that. Surah Al Furqan, verse number 63. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from that verse right up to the end of that surah, makes mention of the qualities of Ibadur Rahman. And he starts off by saying, وعباد الرحمن الذين يمشون على الأرض هونا. He speaks about how عباد الرحمن are those who carry themselves in the correct manner. What is meant by carry themselves? So Allah explains it. Those whom when they walk on earth, when they tread the path, when they move, they do so respectfully. هونا with humbleness, humility. They do not walk about with haughtiness, with arrogance. They walk about humbly. One might ask, so how is it that I walk about humbly? What is the rule? How do I know that this is a humble person, for example, and perhaps this is a sign of arrogance? Point number one, learn to greet people. Allahu Akbar. Learn to greet. Assalamu alaikum. Break into a little smile. That is humbleness, humility. Learn to speak less. When it's needed, yes, you speak. Not that someone asks you, what's your name? And you are quiet. And then later on you say, we were told to speak less. So I was quiet. Don't be foolish. But speak less. Don't unnecessarily open your mouth in a way that you are going to be saying a lot of things that are not needed. Rather use that tongue to remember Allah. Say something beneficial or keep quiet. مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلْيَقُلْ خَيْرًا أَوْ لِيَصْمُتْ Whoever believes in Allah and the last day should either say that which is beneficial or should remain silent. Simple. Thereafter, we need to make sure whenever we do open our mouths, we say something that is really, really thought through and calculated. You don't just open your mouth and say things as you want. Think about what you're saying. You might hurt people's hearts. You might hurt feelings. 
Yes, we are not saying cover the truth. No, we are not saying hide knowledge. No, we will say what is right, but in a beautiful way. If I want to correct you or you want to correct me, there is a manner of doing it. That's Ibadur Rahman. Those who are conscious of the fact that they are slaves of the most merciful will be conscious of the fact that when they open their mouths, these words must not harm the rest of the creatures of the same most merciful. The same Allah. He made everyone else, Muslim, non-Muslim. In fact, so much so that he made animals and all the other creatures. When we are kind to animals, there is a chance of us going to Jannah because of the kindness and compassion showed to cats and even dogs. What about other human beings? What about Muslimin? Subhanallah. So this is why, let's be very careful. The very next verse, Allah says, وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا Those Ibadur Rahman are the ones whom, when an ignorant person speaks to them, they just say peace and they walk away. You reply the salam, but you don't have too much more to do with the person. Why? They are ignorant. They are trying to perhaps make you upset, angry. Maybe they are using bad words. They are jahilun. Maybe they are accusing you. Maybe they are saying that which is extremely bad. You have two options. One is if you have the ability and capacity to correct them, then do so. But if you don't and there's no benefit, then you know what? Salamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam, my brother. And you walk away. Subhanallah. Amazing. So we say peace to them. We don't say war. Remember that. It doesn't mean because you're an ignorant person. Now I'm at war with you. No, I just say peace and I walk away. I try to benefit. And if I can't, I don't make the situation worse because I'm Ibadur Rahman from among them. So this is why Allah says when the ignorant greet them, they just say salam and they walk out. It's not like they don't respond to the salam, but they just say salam and they're out. They have nothing more to do. They don't cause problems. They don't create issues. You have a house of Allah. This house of Allah, it is only those whose hearts are good and clean that will feel like we want to go into the house of Allah in order to benefit, in order to become closer to Allah, not in order to make a noise about the air conditioning and the sound and the windows and the carpet and how this and how that. And when we come in, we keep the place clean. We make sure we are smelling good. We make sure we make dua for those who put this place up and for the rest of the Muslimin to be able to come through and so on. So it's amazing. It's beautiful. This is Ibadur Rahman. وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا وَالَّذِينَ يَبِيتُونَ لِرَبِّهِمْ سُجَّدًا وَقِيَامًا Those who are close to Ar-Rahman, those who are the slaves of Ar-Rahman, they spend the nights in worship. سُجَّدًا وَقِيَامًا Either in sajda or standing up. Standing up in prayer, subhanallah, let's ask ourselves, my brothers and sisters, if you are from among those who read Salatul Tahajjud, for example, do you think there's going to be a problem with the other five Salah of the day when you are making the most difficult one? You see the point I'm raising? If you are regular with Tahajjud, you can forsake your bedding, you can get up and you can continue in a beautiful way for the sake of Allah. You take your time, it's because you want to do it, not because you have to do it. So if you are fulfilling Salah in that particular or at that time of the day, it becomes amazing because you will be automatically regular with the other five. This is why Allah says a true person who's close to Allah, they want to call themselves slaves of the most merciful. You want to truly be Abdul Rahman. You need to be a person who's worried about Salatul Tahajjud as well. Knowing that it's not compulsory, but I want to be loved by Allah and I want to do something for the sake of Allah. Let me get up. I spend my night. Sometimes I will obviously make the dhikr of Allah, remembering Allah in various ways. Get up in salah, make a bit of sujood for the sake of Allah when nobody is watching. So Allah says, those are Ibadur Rahman. They are the ones whom yabituna li rabbihim sujjadan wa qiyama. Walladheena yaquluna rabbana srif anna azaba jahannam. Inna azabaha kana gharama. Innaha saat mustaqarran. 
those who are close to Ar-Rahman, those who are the slaves of Ar-Rahman, they make a dua, they call out to Allah, Oh Allah, save us, protect us from hellfire, keep it away from us, turn it away from us, Oh Allah, hellfire, we don't want it, we've heard about it, we read about it, we believe in it, we know it is there, we know it is bad, we know it is harmful, we know it is very painful, Oh Allah, keep it away from us, it is the bad place, it is the worst place, we could go so they are conscious of where they are going to go after they die those are true believers not just in this dunya but I'm worried about when I close my eyes if I die right here right now where am I going to go minimum I ask Allah oh Allah save me from the fire ya Allah the fire I don't want the fire oh Allah isrif anna adaba jahannam this punishment of jahannam I, ya Allah turn it away from us make us do good deeds that you love that you can accept these are Ibadul Rahman. Inna hasa'at mustaqarran. It's the worst place to go to live forever. It's the worst place that you could ever go. So we know the qualities of Jahannam. If you're a true believer, you will be worried. What's going to happen? It's not just this life. You know the kuffar, they used to say, In here, illa hayatuna dunya namutu wa nahya. This is just the life of this dunya. We are alive, we will die. And you know what? They don't have anything else. They're not bothered about anything else. No, the true believers, they are concerned. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says thereafter, when he makes mention of how the qualities of Jahannam are, and those who are close to Allah would make a dua to protect themselves from Jahannam, he then says, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا أَنفَقُوا لَمْ يُسْرِفُوا وَلَمْ يَقْتُرُوا وَكَانَ بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ قَوَامًا The true worshippers of Allah, the true worshippers of Ar-Rahman are those whom when they spend in this world, they are not miserly and they don't waste money as well. They are not extravagant nor miserly. They know when to spend. They will spend. And they will spend on a good cause, your family members and that which you have to fulfill. And subhanallah, you reach out to the poor, not just only the zakah, but even that which is over and above the zakah. A person's value in the eyes of Allah is gauged by what he gives over and above zakah. It is gauged by what he fulfills over and above the farad salah. The farad is compulsory. But when you've done more than that, now you get closer to Allah. The zakah is compulsory. But when you've given more than that, now your true value is being marked. The reason is, if you take a look at the general amount that is given in zakah, two and a half percent. If Allah gives you a thousand rands, or say a hundred rands, two and a half rands belong to Allah. So when He gives you that money, He is telling you, listen, 97 and a half is yours. Where is my change? Subhanallah. It's not a big deal to give the change back. It didn't belong to you in the first place. Did you know that? For every hundred rands, that two and a half does not belong to you. You have to give it back in change. Imagine someone comes to your shop and they pay you with a hundred dollar bill and the commodity they bought is 60 rands. The 40 rands, you have to give it back. You have no option. You cannot say, okay, I got it in my hands. I'm going to keep it in my pocket. Fine. You can walk out. You cannot say that. So with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that zakah is Allah's way of testing you to say, look, I've given you this. Where's the amount? It's not all yours. It's not. I'm telling you only 97.5 is yours. So if you give back the change, yes, you fulfilled the farad, alhamdulillah. But the bigger deal is when you say, oh Allah, oh Allah, this two and a half percent is yours. But on top of that, I want to just give another 10% for you. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us from among those who are neither miserly nor extravagant. Sometimes we waste money. Now one might ask, okay, I want to buy a house, I want to buy a beautiful car, I want to buy beautiful clothing, good perfume and so on. If you can afford it, it doesn't mean you are proud or arrogant. No, pride and arrogance is not connected to what you have or the quality of what you have. It's connected to your attitude. If that changed your attitude, then you are proud and arrogant, even if you have very little. But if you have the best of everything because Allah has given it to you, but you still greet the people, you still reach out to the people, you are still a humble, just person, you still found in the masjid, you still read your Quran, mashallah. In that particular case, Allah will have blessed you with the best of both. 
Everyone wants a dunya wal akhirah. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al nar. We all want goodness in this world and the next, and we all want to be saved from the fire. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says regarding those who spend. وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا أَنفَقُوا لَمْ يُسْرِفُوا وَلَمْ يَقْتُرُوا وَكَانَ بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ قَوَامًا وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَدْعُونَ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخَرَ وَلَا يَقْتُلُونَ النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ وَلَا يَزْنُونَ He says these three qualities mentioned in one verse. Those who do not worship any deities besides Allah. Those are the true friends of Allah. You say, I'm a friend of Allah. I want to be close to Ar-Rahman. I'm the slave of Ar-Rahman. But you are worshipping everything besides Ar-Rahman. What will happen? You will not be able to progress in your relationship with Allah because you are engaging in the biggest possible sin and that is shirk. So... It is important for us to constantly speak about shirk. People say, why are you speaking about shirk, 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 shirk? I'm sure you've heard that. No, that's shaitan's plot to take you away. Allah says, I will forgive all the sins besides one. That one is shirk. If you die without having sought repentance, then you have no chance. That's what Allah says in the Quran. So I need to be worried about it. It's the worst thing. Look in these verses. Allah says, the true worshippers of Ar-Rahman are those who do not call out to anyone besides Allah. لا يدعون مع الله إلها آخرة. They do not call out to anyone besides Allah. And they do not commit murder. They don't kill. Not at all. They don't kill. Did you hear that? لا يقتلون النفس. They do not kill another person. No murdering. Those are the true worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, if the justice system decides to execute someone, then that is the justice system. But we don't take the law into our own hands because I have a problem with someone. I suddenly decide I'm going to sit on the side like a sniper and shoot this person off. No. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us guidance. May Allah open our doors. Islam prohibits chaos. When you are a true person close to Allah, you will protect the ummah from falling into chaos. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So Allah says, لا يقتلون النفس التي حرم الله إلا بالحق ولا يزنون The true believers, they don't commit zina. They don't commit adultery. They don't fornicate. They don't involve in pornography. They don't involve in immorality. Those are the true worshippers of Allah. You want to be ibadur rahman, subhanallah. Your heart will be stuck to the masjid when you forget about sin, when you don't commit sin. Now there we have a problem. What's the problem? A lot of us have fallen into these sins, right? Immorality. Sometimes, you know, it's normal to love or to f be attracted to the opposite sex. If you didn't, you wouldn't be normal. So it's normal to be attracted to the opposite sex. But what you do with that attraction is what makes you Ibadur Rahman or Ibadur Shaitan. You need to know that. So if you deal with it in the correct way, you Ibadur Rahman. If you deal with it in the wrong way, Ibadur Shaitan. So what if I have fallen and I made a mistake? A lot of people say, I want to be from Ibadur Rahman, but I made a mistake. I've fallen into adultery. I've fallen into pornography. I fell into something bad. So Allah says, <laughs> He first makes mention of the punishment of those who commit these crimes. And he says, they will go into Jahannam and their punishment will be multiplied and their punishment will be severe and so on. Then he makes an exception because people start losing hope. If you say, look, you committed zina, khalas, it's over. You're going into Jahannam and it will be multiplied there. People start getting worried. They become despondent. Allah says, hang on, there is an exception. But, but who? Allah says, those who asked for forgiveness after they committed adultery, they ask for forgiveness and they say, oh Allah, forgive us. Illa man taba. They turn to Allah in repentance. And after the repentance, they continue to do good deeds. So one is to repent. Allah forgives you. You commit the sin again after some time. Perhaps Allah will forgive you again. You commit it after some time. Allah will forgive you again. But if you are from Ibadur Rahman, you commit it once. After that, you say, oh Allah, forgive me. Never again. Your life changed in a way that you... You have now only done good deeds. You know what Allah says? 
فَأُولَئِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ حَسَنَاتِ Those who committed sin and then they sought forgiveness and after seeking forgiveness they did not commit sin again. They continued to do good deeds. We will take their sins and we will convert them into good deeds and place them on the right side of the scales on the day of Qiyamah. Subhanallah. That's Ar-Rahman. That is the meaning of Ar-Rahman, the most merciful. He has so much mercy that you owe him something, but he says, never mind that. Let me give you even more. Allahu Akbar. You owe him because you committed a sin. You asked Allah's forgiveness. He says, I won't only forgive you because I love the fact that after you asked forgiveness, you were only doing good deeds. I'm going to convert all of the bad that you did in the past into good deeds. And here, take it. Paradise is yours. Who is the owner of Jannah? It's Allah. May Allah grant us Jannah. May Allah grant us Tawbah. May Allah grant us protection from Shaitan. May Allah make us from Ibadur Rahman. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and I'm, ju- I'm not mentioning all of the qualities, but I will mention as many as I can. Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنْ وَجْعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا Those who constantly make a dua to Allah. What do they say? Oh Allah, I'm worried about my offspring. Subhanallah. You are close to Allah. You're not worried about yourself only. You are worried about your children. Allah gave you children. May Allah bless those who don't have children with children. Amen. If Allah gave you children, you need to be worried. How am I going to bring them up? Will they have the deen? Will they understand? Will they be close to Allah? Let me teach them. Let me don't just leave it to the school or the madrasa. You need to be involved. You're a parent. Allah says they make dua to Allah on top of that. And they say, Oh Allah. Oh Allah, our children here, grant us from our children, our families, our wives, our spouses, our offspring, those who will be the coolness of our eyes. When we look at them, we are so happy. Oh Allah, grant that to us and make us the leaders of the righteous. وَجْعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ imaman. Make us leaders of those who are righteous. You are making a dua to Allah. You don't just walk into here and say, right, I'm a leader of the righteous. No. You are not. That's up to Allah to decide. So on the day of judgment, you will be found out. But you make a dua, Allah, make me a leader of the righteous. When you make a dua to Allah, you need to work towards it. It's not good enough for me to say, Oh Allah, make me a leader of the righteous, but I'm in the nightclub. Oh Allah, make me a leader of the righteous, but I'm on drugs. Oh Allah, make me a leader of the righteous, but I'm committing sin after sin. How can that be? And then you say, no, I'm making dua. I'm making dua. Together with dua, do something about it. Change your life. Quit the sins. Work towards Allah. Walk towards Allah. And you will see what will happen. So my brothers and sisters, remember this. You make a dua, but with that dua, make an effort as well. And this is why Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِّرُوا بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ لَمْ يَخِرُّوا عَلَيْهَا صُمًّا the true worshippers of Ar-Rahman, the true slaves of Ar-Rahman are those whom, when they are reminded about something regarding Allah, they don't turn a blind eye or a deaf ear. No, they listen and it affects them. Someone gets up and they start talking about a topic that affects you. Because perhaps you have committed this sin and that sin and you need help. We all need help. But sometimes a topic is addressed in a way that we feel maybe this imam is talking about me. But the imam does not know you. It's Allah who knows you. And Allah made him say something that will go straight into your heart. You must feel guilty. That's a good quality. I felt it. Hey, you know what? He spoke to me. And what do I do when that happens? I say, oh Allah. Now that I'm reminded, I want to change my life. Some people, when they are reminded, they become arrogant. You tell them, brother, come, let's go for salah. He says, what are you talking about? Who you think? You're not Allah. I'm not reading salah for you. Those answers are not Ibadur Rahman. Ibadur Rahman don't answer like that. They are the ones who say, Alhamdulillah, brother, shukran. Thank you for telling me. I'm so happy. And let's go together and please make dua for me and I'm going to try and inshallah I will change my life. I appreciate the effort you've made. But remember my brothers and sisters, there is a way of correcting people. You don't just get up on the mimbar and say, brother so and so with his name. 
You know, I saw you in the nightclub yesterday. What were you doing there? Allahu Akbar. But they won't come to the masjid. There is one, some time back, it's a true story. There was a masjid where the imam was a little bit hard. Allah Yahamu, he passed away. He used to get up and name people in the society. This brother, what were you doing yesterday? I saw you with the bottle. This brother here, I saw you on the other day there by the club. I saw you with this woman, that woman. The people didn't come to the masjid. They would all go away. Why? Because they say, hey, hey you go to that masjid for Jumu'ah. That imam will say your name, make you stand up and disgrace you. What's going to happen? I don't need disgrace. Then you can say, look, Sheikh, you are not Allah. You cannot do that to us. We are, we are coming here for the sake of Allah. Yes, we want to hear a good message. You might want to be strong in the way you perhaps say your message, but you need to be wise. When Allah says, call the kuffar to the deen with wisdom, what about the Muslims? You need to call them with even more wisdom. You understand? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and guide us all. So my brothers and sisters, at the end, after Allah makes mention of all these qualities, and I'd like you to pick up, the translation of the Quran and go to Surah Al-Furqan verse number 63 and go down and read the verses right up to the end, not many, and you will find these qualities. Go and read them and every day ask yourself, do I belong to these? Allahu Akbar. You will find when you are worried, every day you will be improving, improving, improving. And one day when you die and I die, we want to be inshallah in the right place. May Allah grant us Jannatul Firdaus. Now after you've heard all this, don't we all want Jannah? We want Jannah, don't we? So Allah says at the end, Those who have all these beautiful qualities, they will be given such a high place in Jannah known as Al Ghurfa. It is a special place in paradise. And they will be greeted, welcomed with a beautiful greeting, with tahiyyat, the welcome and the greetings of Jannah. Salaman, peace be upon you. Imagine as you are dying, you are shown your place in Jannah or you are told, don't worry, you did good with Allah. The rest of it is going to be easy. At the point of death, you are already told. Who wouldn't like that? We all would like that, isn't it? Obviously told goodness, isn't it? The angels that will come to collect your soul will already be angels of mercy. They won't be angels of punishment. And you're already smiling when you depart from this earth. May Allah grant that to us. Amen. And then we go into Jannah. And when we get into Jannah, the angels are greeting us. MashaAllah, Salamun alaykum tibtum, fadkhuluha khalidin. Peace be upon you. You have done good deeds. So now you can enter Jannah forever and ever. You get what you want. Those are Ibadur Rahman. So Allah ends the verses by speaking about paradise and how we will be entering paradise. My brothers and sisters, this entire talk was inspired by the name of this masjid, Masjid Ibadur Rahman. And now that we know who Ibadur Rahman are, at least a little bit, let's every one of us promise that we will try our best to truly become Ibadur Rahman. Spread the love amongst ourselves. Spread the goodness amongst ourselves. Let's learn to talk to one another. Let's learn to help one another. Let's learn to reach out to one another. And let's learn to improve ourselves, our link with Allah. Become humble. Be people who are concerned about their faults and their weaknesses in a way that they improve on a daily basis.